I just want to shout out Brother Johnson. I also failed freshman English, but it's okay because I became an English teacher, so it's fine. <laughs> My name is Shakayla Small. I'm the Dean of Academics for Literacy at Freedom Prep, and I want to talk today about why education cannot be colorblind, especially not in Memphis. A lot of people heard Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, and they saw this quote, and they took it to me, I should just ignore race. But that's not what we should do. To be colorblind is to be handicapped. And that's especially dangerous when we talk about urban education. When a person says that they are colorblind, they say that they are ignoring a key part of your identity. This is something that we cannot do, especially for the children that we are in charge of in urban education. And social construct or not, race is what America was founded on. So we cannot ignore the effects that it's had on our students in the state of education today. Let's be real, urban means systematically disadvantaged, and being a racial minority is part of it. And I want to focus specifically on private and charter schools, especially in the urban setting, because this is where I see the effects of colorblindness the most. As a matter of fact, I couldn't find data on teacher demographics because maybe the data collectors are colorblind. If you can tell me where to find it, let me know. We show students what we value based on what we put in front of them. And one example of how colorblindness shows up is in our curriculums. If we rely too heavily on the canon, which is overwhelmingly white, we tell children what we're valuing. This also goes with teachers. If we are not intentional about recruiting and retaining minority teachers, children will start to have identity crises because they don't see themselves in the classroom. Essentially, when we are colorblind, we are defaulting to whiteness and we are colonizing our students' education. We are robbing them of a very rich experience that will allow them to engage with role models and with examples of what they can be. Minority kids need minority teachers. Anyone, actually, who is willing to work hard for them should be welcome. But as often as possible, those people should look like our students because the role model effect is very real, especially for black boys. Black boys who have just one teacher in grades three through five are 29% more interested in college and 39% less likely to drop out. The effect is the same for black girls. They're suspended at a far lower rate. Excellent minority teachers who match the race and backgrounds of their students have a profound impact on those students' abilities to see themselves as successful academically. This, these teachers help kids avoid internalizing academic success as a white thing, as an affront to their culture. And white kids benefit from minority teachers as well. In a city as segregated as Memphis, it's very possible for a white child to go their entire life and never have a role model that's a teacher of color. Having a living example of excellence in their teachers is a profound way to combat negative stereotypes that they may encounter. And whether it's politically correct or not, silence around social and racial injustice is violent for students. When our fear of saying the wrong thing is more important than acknowledging our students, but our students and what they're feeling, we're not engaging in the noble task of taking risks for the charge of our students. So what I'm not saying is try to change your race. That is not going to help anyone. I, I actually recommend you don't do that. But I do want for you to take into consideration your children's um, rights and the students you have <clears throat> and make better choices for them. And these are some of the choices that you can make. The three organizations at the top are very helpful for finding resources for talking about and teaching rights. And these are just a few su suggestions of low risk things that we can do for our children. The main thing is that we need to listen. We need to take into account children are struggling with things because of their backgrounds and that we as teachers are responsible for helping them work through that. And as we sit in this historic building, a cornerstone of the Civil Rights Movement, we want to make sure that we are proud of the role that we play in this new revival of the Civil Rights Movement. If it's not us, then who? And if it's not now, then when? And so I leave you with this journal entry from the second grade in which I cryptically imagined myself as a teacher. I had dozens of black female role models that allowed me to have a model for myself. Um, these are just a few of them. 
and I would like to make sure that every child in Memphis, every child across the city has the exact same privilege. Thank you.